We are going live. We are talking to the fans. We're here on YouTube. The comments are rolling in. Most of them about Papa P being late. Who is here? He's punctual. He looks good. He looks fresh. He looks well rested. He was not here last week because he was on a shoot. How are you, Patrick? Where were you? Uh, I'm good, man. I was uh, I was not anywhere too exotic. I was just in uh, the mountains of Utah. Oh, very nice. Uh, to- filming for a show for the discovery channel Hmm. uh very beautiful but very beautiful north north eastern utah is gorgeous man oh right on i was in salt lake city yesterday yeah what the hell were you doing (laughs) i saw you playing with a were you playing with a falcon in salt lake city yesterday um i went to meet with uh the my like main clothing sponsor cool and the guys over there and talked to them about this upcoming year and collaborations and stuff like that and they're super cool we went out for an incredible dinner and then got pretty drunk, and it was like 11.30 at night. My buddy Manny, who I've known for a while, and I kind of knew he was into falconry, but never done anything with him, was like, hey, man, you want to go fly the bird tomorrow? And I'm like, uh-huh, all drunk. He's like, okay, I'll pick you up at 5, which at 11.30 at night, hammered sounded like a super good idea. And uh, it was a rough morning because we were pretty hungover, but we had a blast. We hiked around the snowy mountains, flew, flew as Harris Hawk, chased some rabbits. It was, it was awesome. Wow. Yeah, so super what, cool. What does he actually use the hawk for? Hunting. He's, he's a full-on falconer. He goes hunting for quail and rabbits. He's done golden eagles. He's done red tails. And now he's got this Harris hawk and uh, named Rosie. And she is an absolute beaut. Just a super cool. Nice. So Harris hawks, they call them the wolves of the sky. They're one of the only social birds of prey. So, like, if you get a golden eagle and you do falconry with it or, or a red tail or something like that, they're, like, kind of pissed off the whole time. They don't really want to have anything to do with you. They just go and fly and get stuff. And people who are into falconry are going to be like, you're an asshole. That's not true. But that's my understanding of it. And then the Harris Hawks, because they're social, they're, like, these pack hunters, like wolves of the sky. Like, if you don't hold something up for them to sit on, they'll just, like, sit on your head and be like, hey, buddy, where are we going? What are we doing? <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, all right. What about the other guy? Who's this other guy? Yeah, hey, middleman. I'm just sitting here waiting for my intro. Were you guys talking? We were just catching up. I I haven't talked to Patrick in like five days. That's a long time for us, okay? Why don't you relax? You, on the other hand, Mr. Professor, I've talked to every day. How are you? (laughs) I'm good. I think that's my introduction. Just over here trying to manage these comments. Somebody already called me a potato. People are uh, trashing me. They're saying that my hairline looks strange. I literally uh, put a hat on because of that comment. I have McHugh's all over me for being late, even though I was on time. <laughs> it's the have, you guys, time. have you guys heard about this thing? So a buddy of mine got out of med school, and he, he he's not a full-on doctor yet, but he does a residency at, um, I think it's a dermatology plastic surgery place, but I'm not really sure. Plastic surgery. Anyway, he was telling me that plastic surgery has gone bananas during covid because everybody sits on zoom all day looking at their flaws and he's like people come in and you know like i'm signing them in and they're like oh you see how my eye droops over here like i gotta get rid of that like (laughs) see how my nose is a little bit skewed like it's all because a screenshot of the zoom in because they're all staring at themselves on zoom all day long and they're they're seeing nothing but their imperfections i mean uh, it's been it, we've been doing this a while, so I've gotten used to it, but it used to be very distracting. And I always wanted like a feature where I could turn my camera off entirely when I was video chatting. It's super distracting. Like to see just, yourself. occasionally when I'm on with my girlfriend, I just switch. So I'm looking at myself and kind of like, <laughs> smiling at myself. <laughs> yeah, dude, of course. By the way, you if you're on a Zoom, you always know which box is the person looking at themselves because it's the one they're mostly looking at (laughs) right right you're like oh his eyes are always over to the left yeah totally totally yeah um that's funny well but yeah this is fun so number 49 good to do it live awesome to see all the people in the chat all the regulars plus some new people archie morkel i would have recognized that name if he was on before archie (laughs) morkel Did you see Owen Roberts' comment, though? I mean, you know, talk about a guy who's doing the right thing. He's used his stimulus checks to get a few of his ball sack wrinkles removed. Plastic surgery of the fittest. Congratulations. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, there's a couple of things before we get into the live stuff. A couple of things that came up this week that uh, were actually in my my DMs on Instagram, which Mm. I I only do. These are my favorite. Only check about once a week. But, man, we... The people that listen to this podcast are super interesting. 
And yeah. so like everything I get, I'm like, these are all fascinating. But there's a couple <laughs> yeah. I want to talk to you about for us. Yeah, please. Um, so this one, I, I was not aware of this, of this creature's existence, which okay. is terrible considering I produced a show about extinct animals. <laughs> have you heard of the short-faced hyena? I have. I have a big giant hyena. They were they extinct not that long ago, like Pleistocene. I don't remember. Four, They're four thousand years ago. Yeah, that's not that old at all. And they were no. North American, right? Weren't they a North American creature? Yeah, uh, that I don't know. Shit, let me check. That's okay. Yeah, I I know what they are. I know they were a giant hyena. Um, they look intimidating as hell. They have in all the renditions I've seen, they have like tiger stripes. Mm -hmm. uh, for markings, which obviously we don't know whether that was factual or not. And I think they were North America's hyena. I could be wrong. They might have been from somewhere else. Uh, What's see. it called again? Short-faced hyena? Yeah, like a short-faced bear, the other animal we've talked about. Short-faced hyena. Look them up. I don't know if anybody in the comments that's hearing this knows. So they, but, were, yeah. they were broadly found throughout Eurasia and Eastern Africa. So all over Europe. Okay, European, so. not, not, not North American. Yeah. But dude, but, a hyena doesn't need much to be more intimidating. Right. So you're taking a hyena, <laughs> doubling it in size, and then basically crossing it with a bear. Right. This yeah. Is one of the coolest the things that's ever lived on the planet. It has to be. Yeah, absolutely. And talk about just such an intimidating looking creature. Why didn't oh, we? Oh yeah. Did why didn't we go? Why didn't we do an episode about this? Just because there's no chance that it's still around. <laughs> you haven't even heard of it <laughs> yeah so right. that'll answer that question did, for you yeah. did you guys see uh we posted a video on the instagram a couple days ago a day or two ago of a guy feeding like a bucket of chicken to i think it was four or five hyenas that just kept coming up and he was just feeding them and uh it's insane. Like we, we posted it. People are commenting like this guy's dead. Like, but apparently it's like a common thing that is done. I forget where it was, but they do it regularly. They feed the hyenas by hand. And I was like, yeah, that, that's some wild they, they shit. They do like I hyena mean, shows in, in some places in Africa. It's to gotta be Africa or Asia. I mean, there's quite a lot of hyenas in India. Um, there, so when I was a kid, we used to go to this place called Mana Pools, which is on the, in the Zambezi Valley in Zimbabwe where I grew up. It's where my family had their main part of their safari business. And uh, when we weren't staying at the camps, their Mana Pools had like four or five of these little like lodges, like little buildings that you could stay at. And they're incredible. Like you look out over the, water, over the river, the Zambezi River, and the elephants come die right, right there. And they're awesome. And whenever we'd go with my grandparents, we'd stay there because my grandparents didn't necessarily want to go on safari. They just wanted to spend time with the family and, you know, fish and all that kind of stuff. And one time I was there with my grandpa and my grandpa was already getting getting kind of up there in years. And uh, we're, we're out by the barbecue and the sun sets and the barbecue is 25, 30 feet from the little le cabin, right? Like it's right there. It's like like any outdoor barbecue, you know, it's like right outside the, the door. And we're grilling up all these steaks and borovos, which is this African sausage that we love. And it smells really good. And I remember my grandpa was like, I'm going to run inside, you know, get the mustard or something like that. And I was like, great. You know, I'll stay here by the barbecue by myself as a, as a nine-year-old in the African bush. And uh, my grandpa ran inside and he came back outside. And I hadn't even noticed because I was still picking on the meat on the grill or something. And a whole bunch of hyenas had moved in between the house and the barbecue literally come like onto the patio basically. And my grandpa just started like shouting and screaming and waving his arms and making noise and running these flashlights. And the hyenas, first of all, they like ran at me and then I started yelling and stuff and then they dispersed. But uh, I remember to this day, that was oh, one of the shit. scariest, like just a, it was just a flash. Like the whole thing happened in, you know, five seconds. It was like one of those moments. But I just remember looking back at my grandpa yelling and jumping up and down and like four hyenas running right at me and then dispersing. And it was just, Dude. It was oh, so scary God. as a little kid. <laughs> Dude, that oh, brings God. me to a good question that just came in on the live from Harry Starling. Now, we don't advocate fighting animals, but we, are the, we have the <laughs> brain equivalency of a 10-year-old, so we love talking about this shit. Harry, <laughs> Harry Starling wants to know, what's the biggest animal that you could beat in a fight? Oof. Ritep, you go first. One on one, like like one me on one. personally. Okay, yeah. I don't know how we've way. never discussed this actually. <laughs> I know it's, it's good. a great, good question. good question. It's a great question. I mean, uh, God, I mean, this is tough. Uh, none really. An animal? Okay, the biggest animal. I don't I'm, even think I could beat up a raccoon. To be honest with you, I'd be terrified. <laughs> Definitely go not a squirrel. Beaver. 
<laughs> no, you don't want to take on a beaver. You'll lose well, your nipple. I mean, you, like Ratep would be mine. He's huge, and I know I could win. You can't pick beaver. another person, dude. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have picked a million people. What about a baby elephant? Tom Cruise. A baby elephant. No, I don't think Hell so. Hell no. No, I don't think like so. even a newborn weighs outweighs you to by like two times at least. Oh, yeah, the thing is, it, it's it's not about the size; it's the athleticism. Like we are useless. Right. Like go for a run yeah. with your dog. Run as hard and as far as you can, and then see if when you can't move your legs, your dog will then want to play. Like yes. you, you, you know, <laughs> and they weigh sixty pounds or forty pounds or whatever. You know, like. You, we're useless athletes compared to every single animal on earth, basically. So it's like, I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, biggest thing I could beat up is probably like, you're saying a raccoon, Peter, you couldn't even take on. Probably not. Like it probably kick your no. ass. Like if you tried to like fight if a raccoon was a straight up fight till death. Yeah. You know <laughs> With my happen. luck, it would also have rabies. So yeah. It would whoop you, would. man. It would whoop you. Ah, <laughs> oh, geez. That's tough. Yeah. No, mine's like, mine's probably like Thor, my large rabbit. He's pretty hot. Yeah, yeah, you can <laughs> you could easily smash Thor to bits. Yeah, I think that's about oh, right. Shit. <laughs> um, another one that just Pat, came in that I I mean Pat Pat oh. before you move what what yeah. would be, oh you really mean me you're not really gonna pick one you son no of a bitch. well also that's not true uh, definitely not I think I I'd I would smash you mate I know you think that but <laughs> I would feel confident I would feel very very confident fighting a uh, Galapagos tortoise yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they're huge. I mean, you might you might break your knuckles trying to punch through a shell, but no, nah, dude. I would just immediately just get him in a figure four scissor. I would take his head, <laughs> I'd put him in between my legs, do some jujitsu. That's fair. I'd arm bar his wins. neck. Patrick wins because that's like a two hundred and thirty pound animal that Patrick would would win against. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. fair. Yeah, my I mean, my animal always... was twelve pounds, so yeah, you win. <laughs> I win that. You're one. sneaky, Pat. You're 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 definitely a wheeze. Yeah, people. Uh, According to the YouTube live, I am hated by all of the Brosners. So, dude, but at least they're not just like ferociously ripping. I've been called a potato three times. Archie, Archie is just Archie Morkel. Retep can only fight his addiction to Taco Bell and still loses. Classic. It's bananas. Uh, ooh, I just got ooh a little controversy, guys. Ahead, a little controversy ahead. in the chat. Doctor Hyena. Always love it when you join Doctor Hyena. Not because of anything other than I know that you're a PhD hyena. Um. Has Forrest seen the Facebook thing of Neil roasting him that some Discord brosners were talking about? Let's talk about this. Uh oh. <laughs> Fuck <Okay>. Neil Waters. <laughs> okay. So I have not seen this. So please I've seen tell me I've it. seen a few screenshots that Ratep and Will have sent me, but Ratep, you better take the floor here because you clearly am oh, passionate. Okay, about so this. if if people don't know, we put up a couple videos, one before Neil Waters and the thylacine awareness group of Australia re uh, was going to release supposed pictures of thylacine. Then one uh, or two more videos after actually reviewing the videos and Forrest cordially told, you know, more cordially than I would have told it, said it just said that the photos are probably not thylacine. We all agree. Or, or just not Fucking definitive, not definitive enough. Yeah. And it's, also it's our way, opinion. I went back and rewatched both videos to see what was said. You said numerous times, like, this guy is passionate. What he's doing is amazing. He's trying really hard. He's a nice guy. You said a lot of really complimentary things. We just didn't think it was a definitive thylacine. That's no. all. There Dude, by the way, pictures. Forrest, you stand by that? Do you well, see what I don't know he... what's going on. So, yeah, I do right now. Ask me again in three minutes when you're done ranting. <laughs> no. So, so he, you know, he's, first of all, he, he, what I think is illegally had one of our videos taken off of YouTube. He filed an illegal copyright claim, abusing copyright law on a fair use video, which pisses me off when people fucking use the law to censor criticism, which is what he has done. So I had to file an appeal to that and we're still waiting for that video to go back online. So that first of all happened. And that was after he went on our videos, started commenting you know, calling us morons, calling you a fraud. Well, this guy a, he called for us to prat, which is one of my favorite British insults. Ooh, that's nice. I, well, I like to him be now. fair. I, we I are morons, back. and I am a bit of a prat. Oh, like my said, my, yeah, my he, mom still calls me a prat. So yeah, I that you know, like I'm still not convinced that he's that much of an asshole. Right? Yeah, he like, also we said, are morons. He goes, oh, so Forrest has a podcast now with two DJs. Like Ooh, what? Yeah. You guys I mean, DJs? That's yeah. cool. 
<laughs> no, he's so he's basically he's basically saying our opinions are invalid and then going on about how you're a fraud and a phony and all this bullshit oh, that's uh, on the comments. And then uh, and then he files a copyright claim. And then uh, one of the Brosners posted, I guess, a video uh, reviewing, looking at the photos, which is just fair use. This is compl- This is a scientific it's thing. People are allowed to use. look at these fucking re- released the photos as yes. news. The reason right. that fair use exists is so that you, it allows people to comment on things that are released as news to have commentary so that one piece of news isn't just stated as fact. And then that's it forever. That's what fair. Sure. Use exactly. Is. Sure. He exactly. As if he had made news by finding the most famous Lazarus taxon in the world. I know. I was They're super excited. To I told everybody this. to check it out. I was like, yeah. let's go. Huh. Dude. All right. So, well, and then, okay. And then right. finally, Forrest, after, yeah. after right. that, or so he went on commenting egregious comments on this dude's video. He basically said, fuck you, you know, swearing, making to, new, like to, just to, commenting. To us or to some No, no, of on, on one of the Brosner's okay, videos that he did. And it's just laughable, dude. He has no control. I don't know if he's drunk. Uh, that's my opinion. I, I don't know what's wrong with him. He's not getting enough food, even though he looks like he is. Fuck you, Neil Waters. Anyways, my my issue then after that, and the thing that they're talking about is that uh, he made a video and posted it to his private group. So I haven't seen it because I'm not in there. And uh, But some of the Brosners are in there and they've seen the video and it's basically calling you out calling you a fraud, talking about how your production company, or maybe you contacted them looking, trying to pay him to use one of his photos for the TV show. Yes. Yeah, so what? Yeah, we, we do that all, cares, sure we, did. We, we, license, we license every sighting image, every extinct animal image we can. Of course we do. That's what I'm saying. Right? Yeah. That's what every yeah. Yeah. series show does. I know. Right. So, and that's the whole thing. And he's like, Wait, so you know, that's why, claimed- sorry, I'm just trying to understand this. So, he hates us because we didn't agree with his opinion of his videos. And I know we maybe made fun of him a little because that's what we do. And then I'm a fraud because we tried to to license his images. That is from my understanding of the situation. And I've been furiously ruminating on this for a week and a half. Yes. So. Okay. Yeah. I'm so, glad I mean, that you're so upset, Ritap, because one of us should be. And unfortunately, I'm fucking it's upset. Just dude, he's he's filing. <laughs> he's using copy. He's using laws illegally, dude. It's illegal. You, and YouTube even says it's fair use. You have to review it and make sure you're not filing a takedown notice for fair use before you fucking file it. You fuck. Sorry. Yeah. Well, yeah. look. Forrest is very calm because obviously <laughs> I don't really you, care. You've been called a prat thousands of times since you <laughs> by my mom like <laughs> yesterday i'm sure yeah, yeah. um no. but i just don't I like want to say thank you to all the brosters who got our backs on the comments and by the yeah. way if we're wrong tell us we're wrong too obviously in this situation i feel like we were very reasonable but i totally appreciate like edwin and all the people who gave it back to neil because he's just acting like a proper fucking twat yeah Dude, and yeah. he's we might he's be prats, unreasonable you're a twat neil <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you guys can continue being reasonable. He's unreasonable, and and fuck that, dude. I don't have time for that. I put up the videos. Like I I protect the YouTube account, and I, I definitely am not down with people fucking abusing copyright law to quash criticism, dude. That's that's some dictator fucking bullshit, and it's illegal, and I'm not happy right. about it. So well, and also we that. you know we took the time to make the video because we thought people would be interested in hearing our bullshit and for us opinions and then for him to get it taken down just because it made him sad. You know, you know yeah. what I also think might've happened because the only part of this that I know about is I get Google notifications when something like newsworthy with my name comes up and I got like right when his video, right when our, no, sorry, when his video came out and I, I tweeted about it, a bunch of uh, news sources quoted my tweet and said, like, animal, like, notable wildlife biologist or animal planet biologist for it. Galante discredits Neil Waters things, you know, which is kind of a yeah. bummer because I was like, yeah, I didn't really discredit it, but I didn't, sure. I haven't, you know. And, and I remember seeing those. And I was thinking, well, that's typical news taking things out of context. So he might have seen those headlines and being like, fuck this guy, which. <laughs> Whatever. Who well, it just goes to show. I mean, it, it's it's classic Neil Waters, who I just ever heard about last week. But he reads. He doesn't. He obviously doesn't thoroughly investigate shit because what we saw in his photos, once again, were in my opinion not thylacine at all. It was a cat and the ass 
of the I don't know the name of the animal. Patty Melons. All right, because I'm just a DJ. Who cares? Yeah, it's such a big who gives a shit. I do really quickly want to throw out there a couple great comments on the YouTube live. Uh, Michael Renouf says Retep looks like the DJ from Blues Clues. Uh, (laughs) And also, also like Chris D says, uh, uh, Neil Waters (laughs) uses a fork to eat pizza. Which is such, Neil Waters sits to pee. Just a brutal <laughs> this. I sit to pee sometimes, man. Just a big mouth breather. I, I sit to pee if it's late at night. Dude, and for I'm a tired. treat? Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. And again, listen, I don't want anybody to brigade him or do anything. You know, don't do anything. It's just I'm pissed mostly because of the fact that he's, he's trying to censor uh, a valid opinion by abusing copyright law. And it pisses All me right. off. So. All right. Who gives a shit? Let's... Let's do something fun. <laughs> Let's talk Fair about enough. what's in the news. How do you guys feel about that? Amazing. Good. Good. Thank you. Good. Great. Yeah. So, I, I, my one of my favorite things from so far 2021 came up in the news this year, and I'll tell you why. It's not because I think it's such a massive world-changing discovery. It's just because it's so freaking cool. And if I had the ability to do this after every single rugby game, I definitely would. So a couple scientists in Japan have found, and we have no WT Willie tonight, so I don't know how to share this with people, but a couple scientists have found that a couple species of sea slug can literally decapitate themselves when they're tired of their old bodies and just grow a new body. Just, 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 just bring one up when they feel like it. Oops, I messed it up. I don't know. So it's like, you want me to do it for us? They ate a couple couple too many meals at Taco Bell and they're like, you know what? This body's pretty sad. I got to go to the beach tomorrow. There it is. Look at that. There's the head completely removed from the, from the body. And they just, they just pop their head off and grow a new body. Sorry, Patrick, your joke landed flat just because I was trying to figure out tech, (laughs) but it is fun. It also sucked. It also also wasn't a good joke, but how, like, can you imagine? Oh my God. So, you know, playing rugby and doing it less now. But like the Saturday, the Sunday after a Saturday's rugby game, you want to die. You're like, my whole body feels like it's been through a meat grinder. Like every part of me aches. Like I think my finger's broken. I'm positive I've dislocated a knee. Like every part of me is, is broken. Yeah. If I could just be like, I don't want this anymore. Head off, plop it on the couch, throw on some Netflix until my new body grows out. I would, I would do that every Sunday. Listen, if I, I, know. I, I, you're talking about like doing something constructive. I would do this every, every night post drinking on, on that <laughs> Sunday That's or after Taco call. Bell. I wouldn't even <laughs> wait for the toilet ne- the next day. I'd be the like, toilet, oh, I'm out. The, the, the what? I'm cutting what my was head. That, the, what was that thing? The toilet? The toilet? <laughs> Mr. Pryor says it. You know, mullet with a T. The tullet. The tullet. <laughs> Wait, so Forrest, do, do you know anything about how – so this is a fairly new discovery, right, uh, the scientists yes. in Japan made. Is there yep. any idea of how they do this? Um, like um, how, how the fuck do you decapitate yourself and then grow a new body? Well, it's a behavior, and they, it's not like they have claws or something either, you know. So they actually, like, choose to detach their head. I don't, I don't know much about it. I mean, I saw a quote from the scientist where he said, we believe this is the most extreme form of autonomy and regeneration in nature. I mean, it is. Growing an entire new body, you know, like an axolotl can grow a new gill or a new leg or a part of a tail. Right. This thing's growing everything. It's incredible. But- and I. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, let's let's be fair though. I mean, what does a slug body consist of? It, it, it consists of what's in like a human finger. It's, no, but it's, it's no, not dude. Too it's complex. all its vital organs. It's still got every single vital yeah. organ. It's heart. It's liver. It's stomach. Everything is a there. A slug has all of these things. Insects have all of these organs. Well, Are you serious right now? There's there's like eight things wrong with what you just said. <laughs> but yes, yes, the sea slug, not an insect, does indeed have all of the things that we just stated. Um, <laughs> and, and do pretty much all living organisms. Um, I mean, a sea slug, but, by the way, like a sea slug is a nudie, is a nudibranch, right? It's, it's mm-hmm. part of the same family as correct. Colodal. Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> do you read that off your all, script? <clears throat> all nudibranchs are sea slugs, but not all sea slugs <laughs> are nudibranchs. Copy that. Yeah. Pat, you look, you look, you look distressed. I think it's because of all of these receding hairline jokes in, in the chat. My hair, multiple. Again, it's, I'm like, Two weeks away from getting the tuck behind the ears, I'm going to look like a young Andre. 
I can't yeah. fucking wait. It's gonna look- yes, yes. Why are I know Dominic Patrick it's, hairline it's like- shit. Patrick's got just great. I, like I don't want to fluff the guy up here, but he's got great hair. It's I have no man. fucking problem with it. Dude, I'm happy about it. You stole my top knot look. I know it. Well, you know it's funny. I, I top knotted it this morning in advance of going live. I was like, I'm gonna try and go without my sweaty ass hat. And uh, <laughs> about an hour before the podcast, I started getting this weird headache. And then, like five minutes before we started, I was like, "Oh, it's because my hair is pulling." Oh no, yeah, dude. Out of the sky. And <laughs> I I'm know that. Yeah. Um, yep. Hey, Kaylee Ray sent me something on uh, Instagram for us. Yeah. First of all, and give me your honest answer. Okay. Did you know that there were wolves in Wisconsin? I, I did because they've come down from Canada. I did know okay. there were wolves there. I yeah. did not know that. That's super cool. So there's about a thousand wolves living in the state of Wisconsin. And uh, they, the uh, fish and game, I guess, was for some reason in control of the situation. Uh, and they said, we've got way too many. We think we can only support 350. So they said, we're going to allow anyone to go hunt a wolf that wants to hunt a wolf until we've killed 200. Mm-hmm. Oh, how many I days? So hunters now are free to go kill wolves, right? Yeah. They I put a know. quota on them to bring yeah. down the numbers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know why you would want to go do that or whatever, but you know, it's, it's calling, right? Yep. Um, they've gotten out of control. They're fucking up other species. How long do you think it took the hunters in Wisconsin to kill 200 wolves? Wolves are pretty elusive. They're very intelligent. However, people are sick and smart. And these animals haven't been under pressure because they haven't been hunted. I'm going to say three weeks, two and a half weeks. What's your guess? Uh, I'm, I'm going to guess one weekend, two days, Saturday, Sunday. Get out of here. People, Dominic says one day. Michael says two days. It was three days, three days. <laughs> and they, and they went way, weekend. they went way over their, uh, over their quota. Their quota. They, they killed, I think like an extra 28, but what the, what the state is saying is that they think they can only support 350. So I guess what's your, what's your take on this in general for us when it comes to culling uh, predators? I've got a couple opinions on this, a couple pretty strong opinions on this. Well, first of all, I don't have a problem with predator culling. You know, if you are managing a wildlife population and there is a massive imbalance, that's a problem, right? If you have too many sure. wolves and not enough deer, Eventually, there's going to be no deer. The wolves are going to have nothing to eat. They're both going to collapse. They're both going to die out completely. That's terrible, right? Unfortunately, if you're a realist, you realize in today's day and age, you have to manage most wildlife populations. Like, it's all in our control. It's not, yes, there are giant spans of land up in Alaska and stuff where, you know, hands off and that's the way it works and that's great. And that's how the world should be. But that's not realistic in a place like Wisconsin where it's all controlled and it's all managed. So... You have to manage it. You have to manage the deer population. You know, you have to manage the wolf population, et cetera. So I don't have a problem with that, with predator management. I personally could not, like, I don't get the desire at all. Like if I lived in Wisconsin, I actually get the desire to go shoot a deer. I really do. I understand being a predator. I understand what it's like to be excited, to hunt, to chase things. And and then deer is fantastic to eat, right? Venison is delicious. I love eating venison. I get it. I get the desire. Now, if I lived in Wisconsin and all I did was deer hunt and someone was like, hey, do you want to go kill a wolf? I'd be like, no, I'm going to go kill a wolf. It's right. a, it's, it's like, to me, that's almost like murder. So like, I just don't get that and I don't get the desire. But obviously other people do and the predators have to be managed. And it kind of, to me, it's almost like sadistic. It's like how many people were frothing, like chomping at the bit to that's... get out there and kill these wolves? Sure. And look, Stephanie, uh, sorry, Stephanie Commande is asking, why couldn't they just relocate the excess wolves? I guess the well, question would be to where, right? To where? Well, to where is definitely the question. I'm positive that there are locations that are in need of wolves and don't have overpopulation. But I'll tell you why, Stephanie and Ratep, because mm-hmm. what does a bullet cost? Six cents. 60 cents. 60 cents. 60. Yeah. Okay. Fuck. Whatever the, yeah. the the state, every one of those hunters probably paid two, three, four hundred dollars for a wolf tag. OK, yeah. the state just made money and it costs 60 cents to shoot a wolf. Right. What do you think mm-hmm. it costs? And I'm, I'm going to guess here. What do you think it costs to relocate a wolf to trank by the wolf. time you get to yeah. trank a wolf, to get the yeah. biologist there, to get the vet staff there, to get the vehicles there, to get the permits? You have to go through the feds because they're a federally protected animal in some place. You have to go through the state. You have to go yeah. to the other state that they're going to. 
you're talking about millions and millions of dollars to move a hundred wolves, 200 wolves, you know? Sure. So it's a pretty yeah. easy, at the end of the day, it's not biologists that make the decisions, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's the state or the feds and they go, Nope, too expensive. Um, but Stephanie, okay. if they would have come to me and Forrest and said, will you guys pay for this? We would have said yes. And right. We would have paid that $2 million because we have that much money. Yep. We're very wealthy. <laughs> that is obviously. I saw, Wait, I saw, you guys are? I oh. saw, no. I saw Harry Starling said, Forrest could have funded all this with his overpriced book. Thanks, Harry. Dick. What's no, up with that? So you gotta, hey, Harry, yeah. Harry's one of my favorites. He's, he's always, he just likes to take the piss. No, he gets it. I love yeah. it. Um, yeah. Wait, wait, but real uh, quick here. Yeah. I just want to, I'm doing some uh, research for a, a wildlife project that we're going to shoot here in North America, uh, hopefully sometime in the next six months. And uh, I was looking at some, this is just, this fucking blew my mind. I was writing this up the other day. So this is about uh, wolves in Yellowstone, right? And so there was this big pack. It was called the Druid Pack. It was the most dominant pack. It had grown to be the, the largest pack as a function of how many members it had of any oh, wow. ever documented in the world. It was how, like, how many individuals? Wow. Do you know? Ah, shit. I, I'd have to pull up my file. It was, oh, it was like 28. Wow. It's huge. Fucking awesome. huge. Right. Yeah. So the Druid pack ran shit in yellow yeah. for a long time. I'm sure. They get an outbreak of mange. Okay. Uh, and it's in the winter. So it's, it's poorly timed. So listen to this. Because mange is so itchy, they itch off their fur, right? Mm -hmm. And they're creating spots now on them that bald, spot. bald spots, but it's winter. So now they can't lay down to sleep. So now you've got this entire pack of 28 wolves that are sleep deprived because they haven't slept in days. They're getting a minute of sleep at a time standing up. They get completely taken over by three lone wolves and wow. they kill out all the dominant males uh, kill the Holy females, shit. everything. And these three wolves that were from somewhere else take over and start a new pack with a couple of the females because wow. of the mange outbreak, because they had to sleep standing up and they were so fucking tired that they just gave up and were like, we're done. Wow. I mean, that's just, that. it's, uh, it's amazing. It's, it shows, you know, it, it's a perfect micro example of like overpopulation, right? You get too many wolves and, and I don't think there's too many wolves in the world. I'm just saying you get too many of these animals all together, right? Something breaks out, a disease breaks out. You know, it's like, it, it's their COVID so to speak, right? And something goes wrong and they can no longer, they, they're no longer, you know, the, the toughest, the best, the biggest, the strongest. And it just takes some other small population of healthy, well animals to come in and take, take shit over. And it's just, it's just like it's a perfect example for everything and everyone and people and overpopulation and wildlife. I mean, it just shows you what happens when you get super complacent and think that you're in charge of everything because of your numbers and your control over an environment. It's crazy. The Dominic, Dominic Eliano and, and Elianali. What's your first language that you speak, Peter? <laughs> it's not a Dude, Dominic Elianelli. He just said, like humans with COVID. Elianelli is not yep. an English name. I I, I think he's a fellow Paisan, like uh, Papa P over here. Um, <laughs> you a Paisan? F. Uh, Courtney Jones keeps asking Forrest, is yeah. Extinct or Alive coming back? I think we know the answer now, actually. Yeah, Courtney, it, um, it doesn't appear so. You know, on an Animal Planet... Uh, well, they didn't want to continue, long story short. You know, COVID slowed us down a whole lot, and um, that that whole thing hit, and now Animal Planet is doing more shows about kind of, what would you call them, Patrick? They're like reality shows, really, not really wildlife shows. And, I, uh, I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. It, I don't know if it's kittens and puppies. You know, our show was, was shockingly cheap for what yeah. we did. And working yeah. in TV, I've done many shows with, you know, two or three times the budget, and we did it as much as we did on those shows. We just had less people standing around. Right. And as far as what we put on screen was the same, but they, I believe, think that the show is still too expensive. And yep. things like Treehouse Mas Masters or Tanked are get roughly the same ratings as Extinct or right. Alive did. Right. And so even though you found the fucking tortoise and the Galapagos <laughs> and the fucking leopard in Zanzibar, 
it wasn't enough for them to just say, let's do it. And, and that's the state of the world now. If this was back when I produced Whale Wars, yeah, they didn't care about the ratings. No. And that show got no. the ratings, but they just said, this is an important show. It's good branding for us. Right. That's how cable used to be. Netflix came, streaming came, and cable's in trouble. And so right. it's just really, really hard to do anything for long. Here's a little inside thing for people that don't know a ton about how TV works. Cable television, when you do one season of a show, your chance of getting a second season is 7%. So right. seven out of 100 shows that do a full season get a second season. Um, and then your chance once you get a second season to get a third season is about 25%. So it's just astronomically well, difficult to, to yeah. but, maintain a show on. But I mean, so with that said, though, I mean, there's, it sounds to me like there's an opportunity there. I mean, that's kind of what we wanted to do, want to do with this whole thing, not necessarily extinct or alive, but I mean, this is meant to be more than a podcast. COVID has sidelined us for oh. a year, but oh, dude, things I, are, dude, shit, I, I, robots all get vaccinated soon. Like this, the wild times is going to become something much bigger. And That's I'm not what we worried. Want, yeah. And I want everybody, I saw a bunch of people commenting like, no boo, you know, sure. You can let animal planet know. I have no problem with that. We were definitely upset when we In found fact, out. Please do. Please do just on their social because it's annoying because it was their best show maybe that they've ever had. Right. I really believe it. It's one of the shows I'm the most proud of. It was the most yeah. fun I've had doing a show. For sure. We had such a blast. let them know on their Instagram that they should bring Extinct or Alive back. That would be awesome. Yeah. You guys hit them up. Let them know. But um, don't worry. Like, it's not like uh, for everybody listening to this it's not over, you know, like there's a lot and more coming. Forrest is yeah. never going to not be looking for these extinct animals. Like, oh, and just one and way or the other. with wildlife, you know, like there's yeah. nothing wrong, like all things considered, you know, if, if this is the total end of extinct or alive, we don't fully know it. Things could always change, yeah, but we'll do it somewhere um, else. Fuck it. yeah, you know, we don't fully know. Just know that like, this is not the end of the work. This is not the end of it, of what we do. And, and, you know, I always looked at Extinct or Alive, and I want everybody to know this. I've never really said this publicly before, but I always looked at Extinct or Alive being about the journey. Like, yes, I'm incredibly passionate about the extinct animals, right? I, 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 I go nuts when I find Fern or, or the caiman or, or the leopard. Like, I go bonkers. I fucking headbutt my camera guy, right? My sound guy. Like, I go nuts. <laughs> but the point is, it's always been about the message and the journey, right? It's always been about, look at all these, this incredible environment, all of these beautiful animals that are still here, all these things that we can save. And that could turn into anything, you know? It doesn't have to be extinct or alive. It could be, it could be rescuing crocodiles with tires around their necks. It could be showcasing sharks in the Arctic, you know? And, and some of the other things that Patrick and I have done. And, and the list goes on, like it can be anything. It's just about the message really. And that, that's, that's certainly never going to die. So I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> that said though, dude, I do want to, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking about what the right way to do this is. I really do want me, you and BTG to go do the definitive, like spend like three months and hit the whole oh, thing. Man. Hit Papua New Guinea, go do the definitive thylacine search, like get a thousand trail cameras up like six months in advance and just really do it. And I think we will at some point yeah. we'll figure out the right venue and how to do it and how to fund it. Uh, maybe it's something through wild times. I don't know, but that's something we got to do. It'd man. be, it'd be so close to being definitive at that point. Do you know what I mean? Where it's like, of course it's not definitive, right? You can't cover every single square inch of every place, blah, blah, blah. But could you imagine if we put together a couple million bucks, we got, several thousand trail cameras we got an army of fucking brosners and and university kids and we went and put up two thousand trail cameras across papua new guinea northern australia tasmania whatever it could be any of them let them run for three or four months ran it all through an ai program and we're like bam there it is you know there's there's the photo or there's something close to the photo or hey you didn't get it you know it doesn't really matter but at that point it's so much different to like me going to Tasmania and Australia, I'm putting out a dozen or two dozen trail cameras. Right. Neil Waters going and putting his dozen or two dozen out and, and getting a cryptic picture of a butt. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so, that's so small compared to what we could do one day. So, yeah, I'm not, yeah. not too worried about it. We'll Dude. get it done. Yeah, man. We just, we'll go over fucking real, you get real quiet airplane. Yeah. And parachute in, man. Smart. Parachute into some, just parachute. Like, pick like the 10 most preserved, the hardest to get to, pain in the ass pockets. Just parachute people in, sit quietly. Wait, so you're not going to parachute, Pat? 
I would do it for something like this. I mean, I, just, I didn't think I was ever going to ride in a helicopter. And then you get an opportunity to do it for a show, and there's a good reason to do it. And you're fucking scared of flying. You've done it a lot. Right. You've been Let me ask a lot you a question. Now. <laughs> and this, is, this has now been asked several times in the chat. Where's my invite, you fucking dickhead? Look at the pinned message. That's one of at least a dozen Except for one guy who said, what's he going to do, eat food? I, referring to me if I were to I go on. I assumed the that it was known that if we go do something like this, you would be there, obviously. Because how else are we going to do the pod? Uh, yeah. Who's going to fly the plane? Well, <laughs> definitely not you. But um, yeah. <laughs> no, look, Ritep, you're going to come with. Like, remember that show? I don't want to go. Fuck off. You're coming with. Because <laughs> the thing, the reason that Extinct or Alive didn't go to season three is we didn't have the idiot abroad. Like, we had a bunch of hardcore yeah. badass guys in the field. When we bring you along, Ritep, all the comic relief is there. Yeah, I mean, it just depends what direction creatively you want to go with the show. I can be behind the camera. I'm a very versatile individual. This is my first time even on camera. I didn't know that I was this handsome or funny. Hey, real quick, can I just bring up? One news story that came across my uh, my desk. Please, we did start with news, and then we <laughs> got. Means, yeah, yeah, what's right. going on? Everyone's got a drink. I'm hammered. Forrest yeah, doesn't have good. one. He's good, mine's action. empty. I should pour another one. Yeah, I had right. one when we started. You, you have one while I intro this, Forrest. All right. Yeah. So, an Australian man. Hopefully, it wasn't any of the Bresners. What kind of desk, though, mate? Sorry. Oh, my desk is made of. Oh, it's just made out of glass. It's made out of sea glass, actually, <laughs> welded together. Uh, so an Australian man is at a party, and he gets dared to eat a slug. Okay? Okay. He, you know, everyone's like, yeah, just eat the slug. We'll see what happens. Just, just, just do it. So he eats the slug. Eight days okay. later, dead. Okay? Eight days? I think so, because it's, it's, it's a while. It must have been a brutal eight days. In, in what? Oh, sorry. Never mind. Eight years. <laughs> Yeah, okay, because I was about okay. to punch some holes right. in that. Yeah, right. yeah, I got so, you. I got the man you. I got eats you. this slug at a party. Okay. I, let's assume they're boozing pretty hard. Uh, and they're like, yeah, dude, eat the slug. He'll do it. So he eats it. Feels fine. A couple days later, complains of leg pain, goes to the doctor. Finds out he's contracted a rat lungworm infection. Yep. You know anything about this rat lungworm, lungworm for us? A lot, yeah. So oh, I remember this whole dude. story. You Louisiana. About, gotcha. Yeah, in Louisiana. Yes. That's right. Okay. Yeah. They're in the apple snails. You know those big giant snails that were cl crawling out of the bayou? Okay. They carry rat longworms. Okay. So let me see how the, let me make sure I don't butcher this completely. So rats get a worm called a lungworm, right? AKA rat lungworm that can, that eats their lungs and they die, right? But they also perform their, I think that's correct. I'm not positive of the effect on the rat, but they, the rat lungworm performs its entire life cycle within the rat, right? So it, it, it has babies, it reproduces, blah, blah, blah. And at some point in time, the rat shits that out, right? Okay. The rat and mm -hmm. it shits out some rat lungworm eggs or babies. Now, along comes a slug, a snail, whatever. It's gobbling up bits of grass. Into the slug or snail goes the rat lungworm eggs or cysts. And then they hatch out and... And, you know, eventually would, I, I think they might lay dormant in the slugger snail, I'm not sure. But some idiot, and then the only reason I say he's an idiot, I'm sorry that he, he passed away, is because I could totally see myself being this guy at the party. Couldn't you both see me being this guy at the party? So, Come on, Forrest, you'll do it. I just, I just know this guy at the party because I've been in yeah. a million parties where this type of thing happens. Right, yeah. And, and <laughs> I've been they, that guy many you times. You eat the slug, and yeah, it's brutal, this, this rat lungworm gets into you, causes brain damage, all kinds of things. And I remember the story. I remember seeing an interview with this guy's mom, and she was just like, oh, it was this young, he was like 19. He was boozing heavily. Um, yeah, and uh, ate this fucking slug on a dare to impress a bunch of his buddies and then had eight years of slowly deteriorating before he finally died, I think, last week. So there's, no, there's nothing that can be done to kill the parasite? There's no antibiotic or anything like that? Good I don't believe that. so. That is yeah. such bullshit. Here's why when we were in Louisiana too, for us, yeah, we were you. Had, I can't remember the context of why you were telling us not to touch the snails. It was just because there were snails everywhere in the swamp. Yeah, and you were saying don't touch them. That's why. But it really pissed me off for that reason because I was like, I could easily see myself just touching this, picking this up, cool throwing snail. it at somebody, yeah. you know, whatever, and not having no idea that it might have a a rare rat born lungworm that could yep. kill me if I touched this snail. What a bizarre right. thing. 
Yeah, isn't that crazy? Uh, Forest. Um, what is the? There's the octopus that that has the. It's the blue ringed octopus, mm -hmm. I believe, right? Yep. Yep. Very. Uh, have you guys? Somebody sent me a picture. I'm trying to pull it up on the uh, on the thing, but it's you've have you have you ever seen one of these things in person? I have. Yeah. They. I got sent this picture, and I'll find it. But they have the blue rings, but it can do the same thing that all octopus can do, mm -hmm. where it can become identical to its background and look like the bottom of the sea floor. And it's fucking insane. It's just a clear, it looks like a clear animal with blue rings. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because it's incredibly poisonous. So venomous, not poisonous. You, venomous. you touch yep. it and it basically is like one of them. Is it not the most poisonous? So it bites, venom. they bite, they bite, they have venom, like venomous. things like a snake and they bite you. And if that venom goes yeah. in you, you will die. I, I don't believe there's an antidote or an antivenom. So yes, they're, it's not from touching it. It's not just like, oh, drop dead. It's but yet they, but yet they have the ability to blend completely in with, mm -hmm. with the background. So it's like, it's the ultimate fuck you from nature, honestly, <laughs> if you ask me. Just they're, like... they're awesome. They're super beautiful, super badass octopus. Um, yeah, I don't know. Very venomous. Dude. Well, I brought it up just because it was This is a fantastic up. comment. This has nothing to do with wildlife, but in the YouTube chat, Johnny Storm 777 says, one time, one time I was at a restaurant with my girlfriend and we bro I broke up with her. She started crying and everyone thought that I'd asked her to marry me and the whole restaurant started clapping. It was really <laughs> nice. <laughs> <out. laughs> <What a fuck. laughs> if you saw that in a movie, you'd be like, it's too unrealistic. Right, totally. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Oh, man. What are you guys drinking? I just poured myself some nice scotch whiskey. A little Chardonnay. Out with my my and tea. Friday I would have made some double, and tea, but it takes, the, the way I make flame. it takes a while. Ooh, you read a lot. 19 wine. Crimes and Wine. I got a date after this. Got a jacuzzi. And Who's whatnot. the lucky guy? Yeah, who? Yeah. Is that Neil or Joe? Yeah. No, it's my girlfriend who we've talked about many times before. Oh, yeah, podcast for many months. Isn't she your yeah, fiance now? What? Are you out of your mind? I'm just kidding. <laughs> First of all, no. And second <laughs> of all, Forrest, ridiculous reaction. <laughs> um, good you don't know that as a heterosexual, like middle-aged man, there's nothing I get more excited about than, than male engagements. Like right. that's, that's, that's it for me. Like that's it. I yeah, couldn't be more excited. 32nd birthday, you start getting excited about that type of shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not sporting events. It's just, it's when my friends get engaged. That's all that matters to me. Yeah, because you get to go to a nice, a nice big party and and just uh, oh wild. my god, dude! Circa what was it? 2017, 2018. I think I went to 12 weddings that year. There was just a fucking year of oh, weddings yeah. where like everybody yep. turned 31 or 30, 30, 32. I don't even fucking remember. And there was just it was just a wedding year, and it was like the worst year ever. In the beginning, I was like, this is fun. So many parties and weddings. Oh yeah. yeah. And then I looked at my bank statement. I was like, I have to go to how many states and how many places? And like well, each they, one of these cost me like three grand. Like this is terrible. I hate this. <laughs> the out of state weddings are, are definitely like, they start to become a fucking thing. You're like, uh, like another 500 bucks round trip and if you're bringing like your girlfriend <laughs> i gotta say though, he, nothing is more fun than the destination wedding when you're in the mood to go to that one oh right? yeah like if someone's like like i had right. a, one of my best friends got married at this remote village in spain that was like two flights a bus a whole thing and i was just like I, i'm sorry I, I don't have i'm not going um <laughs> but when you're in the mood for a destination wedding a nice solid three days hunkering down at a resort doing great. nothing but boozing hanging at the pool there's no better. Yeah. Way, man. I mean, you and me are talking about two different things. I'm not talking about a destination wedding. I'm talking about having to go back to Chicago every time a friend <laughs> right. gets married. Right. In like the West That's suburbs of Chicago at the Marriott. Don't you, get me you, wrong. Like it's fine. And it's a good time. But it's it's money every time. And you do it for like 10 years. And you're like, ah, oh, shit, I've spent $50,000 on going back to people's weddings. <laughs> hey, bro and Roberts is getting married in October. He has invited the hey. entire... I was Wild just getting him back. Cool. I yeah. was doing my first chat of the how, how of, by the way, how freaked out would Bro and Roberts be if all three of us showed up? We should do it. We should just pop I'll up go. at his wedding. I'll give a I'm speech. In. I won't be asked to, but I'll be the guy that just stands up and gives yeah, a speech. We're all showing up and then he's gonna have Did to explain ever... to his family who the fuck those guys are. 
<laughs> Did you guys ever see when, uh, when Maroon 5 sh just like popped in on people's weddings? It'll be akin to that, except yeah. we'll just get hammered and play no music. Boros will give a drunken speech. Yeah, it's bad. Pat, Pat's actually really good at speeches. I'm very good I heard. At speeches. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Get it. Speech. So I liked this. I see that. One of the Brosners hit us up. So Forrest, I'm going to put you on the spot. Let's do it. All right. I love it. I took human development in college and I learned about this experiment where they took newborn babies, mm -hmm. brand new, showed them a, a fluffy bunny rabbit, right? This yeah. was like in the fifties, like when everything was fucked up. Right. When you, you know, could they, just do whatever you, you wanted do any experiment and call it an experiment. God, and I then was born would, in the wrong time. So they would show them a bunny rabbit in their little mm -hmm. bassinet and then blast off an air horn right next to their head. <laughs> and they would do it numerous times. And then again, like 12 years later, when the kids were 12, they would show them bunny rabbits. And mm -hmm. almost all of the kids, even though your brain changes so much from being a newborn to two years old, whatever, had fear and anxiety around bunny rabbits because of this air horn experiment. And yeah. so what I thought was, God, like who are the people that are volunteering their newborns for this <laughs> terrible experiment? Who are the doctors? Who are these dorks that are writing this paper? All right. So Colton Payne, one of the brosters hit us up and said, imagine you're a mad scientist with no ethical or moral dilemmas. You just don't have that part of your brain. So myself, please continue. Sure. Yeah. What is one experiment with no worries about ethics or morals you would love to do to better understand humans? Ooh, that's a fun question. Yeah, it is. I'm like, shit, I, there's a million of them, but I don't know what the one is. I think I definitely think it's a fear based one. And I'll tell you why, you know, I have, I have these snakes at my house, my rosy boas, and I've had so many little kids come over like babies, like, 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 15 month, you know, a year and a half, two years, three years old. Yeah. And they've never seen a snake before. And even kids that don't speak have an intrinsic instinctual fear of snakes. Yeah. And I find that so interesting. Crazy. Like they're, it's not like they're, they're like terrified, screaming, crying, but they're, you know, like I'll show them the bunny, they'll run over and jump on it. Like I'll show them the lizard, they'll go two hands on it. You know, uh, I'll show them the peacock and they're like char chasing after it. I'll show them the snakes and they're, they're all like, I've never seen a kid just go in for the snakes, like just to try and touch right. them. Or, and, and it's so fascinating because we don't understand anything about that. That is 100% nature over nurture, right? right? Nobody has taught these kids snakes are bad. They don't understand TV. They don't understand books. Like nobody has taught them that. And like for, I think my experiment would be sort of similar to the old bunny horn. Which sure. would be, <laughs> um, like, can I just torture a ton of, kids and adults with snakes and try and understand where that instinctual fear comes from. Like, why is it? There's only, you know, it's not like every snake is venomous and, and certainly not every snake wants to hurt you. Like, right. where is this fear coming from? Where is this instinctual fear? I think I'd take all the, the creepy crawlies. I, I'm evolving it as I go. Yeah, I think go. spiders, snakes, scorpions, all these things and just torture, not just babies, but like babies, kids, uh, preteens, everything with them and try and understand where does all of this fear come from and why is why do you look at a snake and instantly get scared and look at a bunny rabbit and want to hug it like before oh, you even understand it's totally language. true it's totally true yeah. like i have friends that i visited recently they have a they had like an eight day old baby mm -hmm. and they have a german shepherd that weighs 75 80 pounds the German shepherd comes up, noses the baby. It's very gentle, right? Loves it. The baby yeah. just loves it. But yep. yet terrified of a harmless garden snake. Right? Pretty yeah, interesting. it's a thing. Yeah. It's really interesting. Well, and nobody's taught the yeah. baby that. Like the baby just oh, well, it's, has it's, that. It's all, it's all primates, right? Baby monkeys right. are terrified of snakes as well. So yep. uh, yeah. if you're super, super Christian, you might say it's tied to the Garden of Eden. True. Yep. You could say that. Someone like Ratep. No, it's true. That. That's true. Because it's biblically speaking, snakes are bad, right? right? They tempt you and blah, 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 blah. I mean, I think the the obvious well, answer well, is we're all primates. We know that, you know, whether you can identify the species of snake or not, snakes are scary and snakes are dangerous. But how do you even know that before you understand language? Like so, before you can walk, you know, like that's that is interesting. Well, it's, yeah. it's, it's the false positives theory, right? So people that get the most false positives humans and primates, right? So false positives, meaning yep. that's dangerous. I need to have a danger reaction. The more yep. false positives you get, 
the more things that can hurt you, you stay away from. So even if 95 out of 100 things weren't going to hurt you, it's still better to identify it as danger and move away. And stay away. Yeah. And that's a huge – one theory uh, this guy Sam Sheridan that we should have him on sometime. Uh, he's a really cool author, wrote a book about uh, fear and the stress response. But yeah. one of the ideas is that – uh, nature, natural selection chose the humans that are alive today are the ones whose ancestors got the most false positives. Sure, the snake, the most, bad, more fear. Yeah, yep. going to kill me. I'm at heights. Bad, it's going to kill me. Right. Right. So false positives were sort of chosen, but it's also one of the things that is the reason why we die uh, prematurely because we have so much anxiety as a result of all these false positives. Right. It's stress. And, and I got to think it's a scale, right? Because if you, you know, like. Sexual reproduction comes with like bravery and ability, right? Like the reason, uh, regardless of how PC we want to be and everything, but the reason right. like a, a female chooses a male in the animal kingdom, humans or otherwise, is because they want to pass on their genetics. So you want strength, you want bravery, you want abilities, you want, you know, that's why, you know, the big jack six foot four hot guy is more desirable than the smart, you know, five foot nine nerd. You know what I mean? It's like he has more desirable physical qualities. So it's like it's got to be this shifting scale where it's like at what point are you basically just a sissy, you know what I mean, and not just false positives. And it, it like there, there's got to be this like middle area where it all makes sense. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I mean, uh, but y y so you're saying that it's unhealthy. Are you laughing at Kong? Have... Are you laughing at Kong Evans, Forrest? I, I was laughing at Kong Evans and then Toilet Retep Ew. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah of course you would be laughing at pat's fucking comment in the it's chat because you guys are yeah but con yeah, it's ridiculous yeah, whatever, with you dude. two you guys are always glad handing just you know right. slapping butt listen huge head. go ahead yeah <laughs> yeah no, i was i was saying though like so you're 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 saying that you think that the stress and anxiety that's caused from the overabundance of these types of, of being scared of irrational things is can cause can shorten life as opposed to the actual things that we should be scared of reducing life and it's a balance between between that right that's what you're saying yeah i mean look babies are born with a startle response right so that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons we swaddle babies is because a, a, a baby that's two hours outside of the womb will just go <gasps> out of the middle of yeah. the sleep it startles its heart rate spikes it gets adrenaline starts coming out of its kidneys and so we or sorry adrenal glands but so we, we, we are the ancestors of the primates that had the quickest response to a possible thing that could kill you and keep you from pushing your DNA on. So it's just interesting. And that, of course, that's part of the reason why you've got like 25% of the Western world is on anti-anxiety medication because we have <laughs> overactive adrenal glands, which causes aging to the cells and uh, but it damage to your system. What I was going to say, though, is it's, it's interesting because, like, <laughs> this is so dumb. I, I bought these devices that are marketed on the fact that they, they cut out uh, stressful uh, certain frequencies, like higher frequencies that, uh, that cause stress. That's like talking about the same thing, basically, where uh, – and now those are all around us in today's day and age, and we still have this thing in our ear – which which alerts us to these frequencies because it was super important to hear somebody step on a leaf in the woods when you were walking around 3000 years ago but now when you're walking down the street in New York and there's cars driving by and people honking horns and shit we still have not devolved or evolved outside this thing out of our ears so we pick up all this shit and it anyways my point is is it it claims to fucking knock all that down and uh I mean, I've been it's wearing them. It seems right? to make me calmer. What? Do, do you understand what he just said, Forrest? No, I got, I got like 8% of that. Um, okay. No, I, I'm kidding. I, I'm kidding. Um, yes, he got a weird thing that cuts out noise. I, I, basically, what I got out of that is you wasted your money on some gizmo. That's what I took away from that. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying is that we, it, the, they were marketing it on the fact of what we're talking about, that yeah, I got we you. have I a got physical you. attribute yeah. in the ear yes. that funnels certain frequencies into our ears that we evolved to, be, to protect ourselves back in the day. And we still have it. And so I'd like your thoughts on that, Forrest. Did I get swindled? 
No, oh, I don't know, man. I think I think there's a lot to that. I think the overstimulation thing, it's kind of what we're I was talking about with Bradley Trevor Grieve about how I get lost in cities, right? Like your your body is, you know, and, and when you're out in nature, it's like very easy to know where you are because you're taking everything in. It's the same thing with like all your senses, your smells, your your ears, everything, I think. It's like stimulation is great and overstimulation is too much. And when we yeah. live like I've got fucking brutal neon light or not neon what do you call it fluorescent lights overhead i've got a screen here i've got a light in my aquarium back there you know i mean there's a light on my phone like it's like too much it's too much stimulation and that's stressful and i think it's the same thing with noises like when i'm out in the woods sleeping at night i sleep like a baby it's beautiful and i absolutely hear when something moves through the leaves you know and that startles me and that creates that creates stimulation and stress or whatever versus everything making noise which is constantly creating stress and your tv's on and your radio's on and your phone's pinging and oh my god yeah you know i'm with you i i totally get it yeah it's crazy so you're saying that i did that i made a a a perfectly logical investment into these beautiful wonderful pieces of ear equipment sure i have your Let's go with that. okay so that's all i, I want to hear i want to go back to something patrick asked earlier you know the whole if you could do any fucked up experiment and i haven't even heard your guys yet because we got so Shit. dog-legged on this i think Here's the other one, and you guys are welcome to steal this one. I would <laughs> love to know, again, it comes down to fear-based. You know how you know the old saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger? If you terrorize someone, basically, or like say you take, take, you take a population, right? You take 100 people, and you terrorize them, right? And you do that for a couple of years or whatever, and then you let them go out into the world, and then you study them. How many of those people like get tougher and stronger and, and grow thicker skins. You know what I mean? Because they're, they've been terrorized and how many of them basically melt down and are, are, you know, they kind of function in society, et cetera. Like where is that fear response and how does that relate into everyday life? Like, I feel like I've had some, what would be considered pretty substantial traumas, like from falling off the waterfall, like losing my home in Zimbabwe, blah, blah. blah. And I think it's made me tougher, but is that just a, social construct has that actually not made me tougher you know has that actually made me more scared of those things happening like i don't actually know like i've been told that that it may has made me tougher and i think it's made me tougher but i don't know that do you know what i mean that would be yeah. a cool experiment to know yeah yeah for sure i mean that would be a great experiment because that happens all the time i mean like with war and all kinds of things i'm assuming that if you can control th the factors like age when something like that happens probably has a huge huge effect on uh on that you know and then just your genetics but yeah it would be super interesting to know to actually do a controlled study on that i think so so what are your guys's and then we'll talk about some animal stuff i don't think we're gonna have good ones that's why i just asked you because i was like you'll probably have a good idea i mean <laughs> well i mean i can good I, I i don't i don't have one but i'll talk about one that was actually done and uh, it's because I took psych in, in college and they talk about this one. It was, I think it's called Milgram's uh, experiment where basically they sit down uh, a pair of humans <laughs> across from each other. And, uh, but you can't see the other person and you have a, uh, you're, the one person is told that they have an electrical, uh, they're connected to like electricity. And the other person is, you know, in another room and a person's there telling them to electrocute that person with stronger and stronger electricity. And the yeah. person, even though you would think that a, a person for no reason would do that, they, they do it with ever increasing strength to the other person on the other end. And the, the experiment was on authority and the, and the way that humans react to basically just being in the presence of authority. So that was pretty fucked up. Yeah, that's bizarre. I don't understand what you Weird. said, literally at all. But that's fine. I, you know, well, that's I, because you weren't paying attention, you fucking weasel idiot. Okay, I, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm sorry. Look how mad he is. Time, Horace, Horace, look how mad he is. Yeah, you're yeah, because you're you're, you're a fucking you're a dick. Here's don't don't like. pull a fucking Neil on me. Here's don't pull a Neil like. Waters. On I'd me. like to. Okay, so men, male humans die eight years younger than female humans. Okay. On average, I've heard right. that. Before. So the average yep. life expectancy is like it's like seventy two, seventy three, and like eighty to eighty one for a female. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would like to. Uh, I will develop my own cocktail of vitamin, right? Okay, it's going to include some okay. estrogen, some things to counterbalance the very corrosive testosterone that 
uh, Forrest, you and I have talked about how cor- corrosive testosterone can be in the, in the, the body. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to develop this beautiful mix of vitamin that uh, I will Good start one. dosing uh, male babies with upon birth up through death. I'm going to have a lot of funding. This okay. is going to be a long study. Uh, and I'm going to see how – is their life improved – by having more estrogen in their system and developing slightly female breasts, but while also <laughs> living seven to eight years longer, uh, that's going to be my experiment. Interesting. Thoughts? Thoughts? Interesting. Yeah. Well, I, think, I don't I, understand anything you just said. Let's oh, move on. Oh, you're <laughs> fucking sick. <laughs> you're a dick. All right, Forrest, All right. let's get some more wildlife in here before everyone uh, quits the YouTube live. Yeah, I mean, this is a mess. This is a god damn We're lost in that wild talking about? This is the best fucking... People have been clamoring for a live for like a month, and finally, I got you jamokles on here. Is that a weird Oh, real quick, right. real quick, Forrest, before we get to the next yeah. wildlife thing, people keep sure. asking about it in the chat. Tell us about your book, man. Yeah. yeah. You don't, Patrick, you don't have a copy, right? Well, did you I know talk you about it last week on the podcast or no? No, not really. Did oh, we good. get into it, Ritev? No, no, a little bit. We, we did the comp- the giveaway. All you said, oh, okay. you talked about a little bit, and we're going to give one away, a signed yes. copy. But I will tell me, talk tell about me what the book. Talk about real quick. Yes. Here is the book. It's sitting on my desk. I don't know if you can see it. No lie. A handsome man with a, a very cute tortoise. Patrick, you are your name is relentlessly mentioned in this thing, including That's in the great. acknowledgments. So you better read it. Well, please um, send me one. I will not buy it. Um, no, you shall not. <laughs> um, uh, no, the book's been fun, man. It's it's. I think I I think I told you guys when I started writing it. Like it was kind of right when COVID hit, and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do for the next, you know, God knows how long. So I started writing the book, and it's it's just it's part biological adventures, part memoir. It starts with you know my childhood in Africa and the things that I learned in growing up there and how my family, you know, was forcefully evicted from their home and how I came to California. And then something that nobody knows about, like all the trouble I got in when I first got to California, like the fist fights and the the getting getting pinched by the cops and all the things, basically not because I was a shitty kid, but just because I was just wild from being in Africa. I was basically like a feral street kid. And... um, (laughs) And Dude, uh, yeah, it's like it's though, the, the fish out of water thing. Like you, you were not a street kid in Zimbabwe. You guys had a farm. You had a nice yeah. life there. Great life. That was taken away from you, but still, the fish out of water of ending up in Northern California, or Central, what San Francisco yeah, central, area? Central, yeah, Central. California, uh, yeah, it, it just had to be so fucking bizarre. It was super weird, and I talk a lot about it in in Still Alive, and and you know, I talk about how like. If someone, you know, where I grew up, if you had a problem with somebody, the teacher would tell you to go outside and sort it out, right? And you'd go outside and you'd, you'd put, I'm not kidding, this is in my school, the teacher used to tell you guys, hey, you two go sort it out, right? And there were boxing gloves that you could get if you wanted and you'd go out and I'll be totally honest, most of the time you both end up in tears, but you know, sometimes only sure. one of you ends up in tears and then you both go back into the classroom and you're good. By lunchtime, you're back playing together, hanging out and there's like no ongoing, you know, of course you have friends and enemies and everything else, but it's not like this very different to here. So I came into California. I first started life in California in Oakland because my family lost everything. We were on welfare and Oakland's pretty fucking ghetto. And uh, I remember I had a problem with a kid. And I, <laughs> Goodbye, I went, Oakland Brosners. Yeah, they're they're fine. Um, they're too busy being ghetto. And I like went outside to fight with this kid and he was like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna get all my friends. And I was like, wait, what? You're gonna kill me? Uh, it's just like it was just like yeah. so different to how I'd ever like had feuds, and then that same kid like jumped me with a bunch of people and kicked the shit out of me and pulled knives on me and stuff. And I was just like, this is like I don't under like I'm so confused by all of this. Like I just don't under as a 14 year old, I just didn't understand it. So I got in trouble a lot, and then I just do things like I was just wild. Like I grew up with in a country with basically no rules or, or laws, and so you know I'd see yeah. something like, oh, you can't no trespassing here. I'd be like okay, but that's where I want to go. So I just like jump over someone's fence and, you know, walk through their yard and build a fire or something. And then, you know, next thing I knew I was in (laughs) In their backyard. Yeah. And I was just like, well, this is odd. And so, yeah, there's a lot of that in the story. It's pretty fun. And then it gets into like how I met Patrick and, or it talks about naked afraid a very little bit. And then how I met Patrick and how he came up with extinctor alive. And I kind of gave some ideas for it and we, we put it together and we took it out to a bunch of places and pitched it. And finally animal planet, 
bought it and then we're like now what you know and like patrick was this accomplished producer and we had this other part patrick partner eric who's super accomplished producer and i was just like this kid who didn't really know what he was doing but loved animals and like tells the whole story and then you know our first talks i talked about being a biologist going through university all that stuff too sure, sure, and then sure. some of our adventures patrick talking about sitting in the hotel room drinking coming up with meat tree and talking nice. about the galapagos and all the stuff that you don't see on the show you know and that's I think what's fun about the book, it's all the like the stuff like, you know, well, what really happened is, you know, day one didn't do this and day two didn't do that. Like Patrick and I were sitting around drinking when we came up with Meat Tree in a hotel room, you know, like it, you kind of never show that. <laughs> Epic, Epic and beers are so far superior. So like yeah. Budweiser, plain old Budweiser is the best beer that is made in North America. Good. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't agree is their taste buds are fucked up. Uh, Forest, the beers will, in Africa will, are unbelievable, man. You just crush good. them. We drank crush. a lot of them. Delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, just because I can't uh, take you to a uh, glad handing for too long at a time, but after this, Pat, I want to hear you uh, chime in. Uh, will Pat be reading his own parts in the audiobook version? I, we should probably do that. We probably, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Are you kidding me? He's got a silver tongue, this guy. <laughs> Yeah, um, of course we will. But yeah, so anyway, and then we just do all that fun stuff and, and then just kind of talk about my path and figuring out how to communicate wildlife through media and television instead of, you know, through academia. And I mentioned the podcast and a few other things like that. And, and then, you know, kind of what's next. And that's oh. and a bit of a call to action at the end of the book. And that's the story. Oh, my God. I'm super actually curious about this question from Elizabeth Nall. Pat and Forrest, where do you think you would be if Extinct or Alive didn't happen? Would well, would your life have been different? But what, what do you guys, I mean, you guys, would you even know each other, you think? Uh, we probably would have met once for a, a very expensive brunch in Santa Barbara. And then <laughs> the I remember that story. Yeah. But, uh, exactly. No, yeah, I mean, of course, you know, your life's different every day based on the choices you make. You turn left instead yeah. of right and, you know, you might get in a car crash. I mean, for me, it's... Yeah, my life would be different. I would have still just done another show instead or whatever. But uh, some of those experiences were easily memories that I'll for sure have forever that like, mm -hmm. I got so much out of going on those trips. Uh, realize, you know, it's always good to do stuff that's way out of your comfort zone. And doing the shit with Forrest was always uh, putting you in a terrible spot. And yeah. so I, on every episode, there'd be two or three times where I would be in a spot where I feared for my life and felt <laughs> bad about it. And those experiences are so good. You come through those and you really feel like, like an accomplished person, like a badass. And the, the moment where we two, one found the leopard in Zanzibar, that moment where you started screeching like a macaque in the back of the bus. Oh yeah, seeing, of course. Yeah. yeah your tape <laughs> of the, the trail cam with the Zanzibar leopard. And then to oh, yeah. the finding Fern in, in the Galapagos. I mean, that's two of the best moments of my life easily. I, I totally, yeah, I would be nowhere near where I am without Extinct or Alive. I'm sure of that. Like I'd already at that point in time decided that I wanted to communicate wildlife in through media and not science. So I knew that I was going to do something, whether that was TV or, or try and do YouTube or, you know, I didn't know what it was, but Maybe it was writing kids' books, you know. I but I think my life would be very, very, kids very books, different. Huh? I mean, any yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I could write a kids' book, but you get my point. It was just that I wanted to communicate passion and excitement for animals and wildlife through a media platform because I thought it had more impact than doing it, you know, as what I had been doing up until that point, which was as a scientist, as a biologist, working as a field tech or working in an office. And I, I wasn't loving that. I wasn't challenged every day. And I wanted to communicate it on a bigger platform. And that's what we did. And, I, and it's the best. And I, I, I say it in the book. I say it here. It's like I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am today if it wasn't for Eric, our other partner, Patrick, and Extinct or Alive. I mean, together, it's, it's been freaking awesome. Like, the journey has been incredible. And I feel like it's just still starting. You yeah, know, it's like, just Extinct or Alive um, is just uh, the beginning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, someone's bell just rang. People think that uh, the Taco Bell delivery. No, that up. was that was the bell for you guys to shut up and stop uh, patting each other's backs. Let's move on to you, more animals. You asked the question, boy. I didn't ask it. One of the brosters asked it, and then everybody got mad. Harry Starling's furious. <laughs> About what? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not following. What happened? That's okay, yeah. Forrest. 
Mark will smash it. I'm way. too slow. Um, well, you know what? Answer. At the end of the day, the end of the day, gentlemen, this is a podcast about wildlife and adventure. We we perfect segue after talking about how that's what I want to do. So, you know, to be honest, there were a couple fun things in the news this week. You know, there was yeah. the there was the the poor guy who died from the slug. There was the Japanese slug. A lot of slug stuff. There was the wolf of, thing. Shit, a lot of slugs in the news this week. <laughs> yeah, a lot of slugging in the in the news, but. I think we should play a game. I think we should lighten it up on this pod. What do you guys say? Let's do it. Oh, yeah. All right. Can the Brosners Let's play join a little the game. Wild Bunch? Of course. Well, yes, they will, because we're going to play Bizarre Animal of the Week. Uh, I'm very excited for this, mate. Excuse it's me. A fan, Excuse you're me. disgusting, Excuse Rip. It is a fan <laughs> favorite. People love it. If you're new to the pod, here is how it works. If you're listening live, go ahead and put your comments in the YouTube but what I'm going to do is I'm Ooh, going to. Yeah. You're giving away a prize? Yeah. Why not? Why wouldn't we give away a prize? What should we give away? Should we give away? How about a book? Listen, about a book? rules of the contest are now anybody who comments on any video is getting a prize. I no. can't. I'm going to have to go through all these comments, all these iTunes. We already have like no. one in the deck. All right. Let me explain it because Retep is very, very silly right now. Yeah, He's you are. Lost tonight. You're revved up. All right. So if you're on the YouTube live, you have a unique opportunity here. First one, first one to guess the bizarre animal of the week. Oh, okay. I know you're going to Google, but the first one, we'll take note, gets a signed copy of Forrest's book. It's probably pretty good because I mentioned in it. uh, It's called (laughs) Still Alive. We're not really promoting it. You you didn't ask me to ask you about it, but I wanted to know. Uh, All right. So. Forest, go ahead. Bizarre Animal of the Week. Yes, so Bizarre Animal of the Week. Here are the rules. I am going to say things about this very unusual creature. I'm going to list features, characteristics, and traits. And at the very end, we're going to take a guess at to what this animal could be. If you guess it, you win the book. Are we right. ready? Yeah, let's get into it. All right, here we go. I'm you monitoring have... the live feed, so I'm on it. I'm on it. Very good, very good but you don't know what it is yet, just so that everyone understands. I do not know. Um, Right. So this animal, our bizarre animal of the week, starts simple. It's nocturnal. Awesome. Awesome. (laughs) Very good. It's not bizarre at all. (laughs) What does that mean, Ritap? It means that it fucking is awake at night and sleeping during the day like my ex-girlfriend. It's fucking and it's awake at night. It's a a fucking awake at night animal. You got it. How do I mute Pat's mic? Can I do that? Let's continue. Okay. These creatures, these very unusual creatures, are carnivores. They're meat eaters. Mm. Okay, So we've got a ni- nocturnal carnivore. Not exactly narrowing it down yet. But, wait, wait. These weird creatures are amphibious hunters. Okay. okay? So they're hunting in the water. Nocturnal mm. amphibious hunters. Okay. And they're carnivores. eating meat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now we're starting to get a little confused. Is it a... Is it a reptile? Is it a frog? Where, where, where are we going yeah, with people this? Are, people are well, guessing. They don't know what good, it is. Good, good, yeah. good. People might know what it is. I doubt it. Let me tell you this, though. This bizarre, nocturnal, carnivorous, amphibious hunter has webbed feet and claws. Webbed okay. feet and claws. Okay, now, nocturnal. brain's going all over the place. We're starting to think, uh, you know, could it be a frog? Could it be some kind of... Who right. knows, right? It's weird. It's a weird yeah. animal. They live in solitude. They buy completely by themselves. You know, they only get together to mate, and then off they go. Their Sounds lifespan good. is unknown. We have no idea how long they live for, even though we that's know about weird. these animals. No, that's we weird. We don't know about their lifespan. Now, guesses are coming with in. Me. Good. Now, these animals <clears throat> have fur. Ooh, they so everyone who just said platypus... Fuck off. <laughs> it is a furred creature. Okay. 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 Um, and their fur is water repellent. All right. So they've got a waterproof coat of fur. Ritep, okay. you look very confused. A lot of big words out There's here. There's just a, no, it's not that. Fur. There's a lot of things going on here. It's, they, yeah. they have webbed feet. It's got fur. They don't know how long it lives. I mean, I was thinking maybe it was like a small creature, but since it's. Okay. Got fur and webbed feet. It's probably larger. Nocturnal? Fuck off. All right, go on. Okay. So what if I told you that this nocturnal carnivore that hunted in water with its repellent, uh, water-repellent fur and its webbed feet and claws had pouches? <laughs> <laughs> it's a marsupial? 
Is it a marsupial? That yes, it is. Good. In fact, a marsupial. Oh my! It God. is. And you, you guys are thinking that you might know what it is, but stand by now. Stand yeah, it's by. It's a water kangaroo, just like we had the tree kangaroo the other week. <laughs> well, do you think <laughs> that this bizarre animal, the males, will tuck their junk into the pouch to not get it all tangled up while they're swimming? This is an actual thing that they'll do. Yes, very confusing. Uh, I'm okay. I'm lost. It is indeed a marsupial. I said that. Yeah. Now, right. where do marsupials live? Everywhere, dude. Uh, Australia. I mean, oh, Australia. Yeah, Australia. Yeah, Australia. You right. think Australia, right? Well, this marsupial does not live in Australia. So all you platypus guessers, Ooh. get out of here. Yeah, someone got it. Someone I'm just I'm just admitting that I know what it is this time. So oh, okay, maybe. okay, you checked, you looked at the sheet. Well, keep okay, going then. May, may, may end it off. All well, right, so please. let me sum it all up for you. This incredible black and white striped creature, which is a new tidbit, is nocturnal. It's a carnivore. It's an amphibious hunter with water repellent fur. It has both webbed feet and claws. It mm -hmm. is indeed a marsupial. The males will mm. that, which means it has a pouch. The females, the young can actually ride safely while fully submerged in the water in the pouch without drowning. The mm -hmm. males will tuck their junk into the pouch to not get it tangled while swimming. They live completely in solitude. Their lifespan is unknown. Mm -hmm. And this bizarre marsupial, because everybody's thinking that it's something else, does not live in Australia. I got it. I know what it yeah, is. You got it. Go, go ahead, right. Recep. What do you got? What do you what got? What is it, Recep? It's obviously Aquaman. <laughs> Oh my, god. oh my god! You got, I got it. it right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the, what any, gave it away if, was really the fact that we didn't know how long it lived, because really it's hard to catch Aquaman. You know? Well, I don't know if anybody's guessed it yet. This they, animal they lives have. in Central and South America. I haven't been able to see the comments. In case you're still playing the game, it's the only member of its genus. If you're a scientist, this very oh. unique, very weird creature is indeed. The water opossum. Oh my what, god! What is that, man? It looks exactly <laughs> like <What>? Pat. <laughs> Dude, it, I'm not gonna fight that at all. It does not like me. Look By at the way, aren't this, they crazy? This is fucking crazy because the our water appearances. Look, look at its fingers, man. Look at look at just it looks like a fancy rat, but it has all these other crazy <laughs> abilities. Yeah. yeah, it's a fancy rat. It's also known it as a fancy rat to scientists. Yeah, that's uh, right. <laughs> so I just I went through it. Your Urig Wild was the first one to do it. Uh, oh right. Urig Wild. He says they're native to his country, which I'm assuming yep. you know, assume is Uruguay. Congrats, yes. Urig Wild. You <laughs> got it first just before Daniel Cool, who almost always wins. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Guys, this guy's a pro. Um, so Wild hit us first. Like have fun paying uh, for postage to send the signed book to Uruguay. Sounds like I'll have to. So yeah, man, hit me up on Instagram. You do all the time. I'll get your book out. I'll even sign it. Um, yeah. So congrats on that. Super cool animal. Oops, I'm now sharing the wrong screen and I don't know how to unshare it. There we go. Unshare. Whew, good thing my porn tabs we, we, are not open. We suck with that, Will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, that is the water opossum, our bizarre animal of the week. Super cool creature. Awesome, I've man. never seen one. Would love to see one. I was going to say, that looks really interesting. I've never even heard of that. Me so, neither. Yeah. Very cool um, animal. Yeah, well, which is funny because Patrick said possum, like, guess one, second one, which I don't know if you'd check the sheet by then or not, but that was pretty funny. So, for Wait, us, you guys I, have access to the sheet, Pat? Uh, I, I weirdly well because Will's not here, he had to cut some corners, and so I was able to see the sheet. <laughs> so I was able to monitor the uh, listen. The YouTube before blog. we move on, somebody has asked this question at least fifty thousand times in this chat, and other people what have been now asking the question. Forrest, what they want to know what? if you speak Zimbabwean, and I assume that just means things like zebra and out of space. But is there an actual language? Ndi. Indeed, Shauna. Does that mean yes, indeed? I speak Shauna. Shauna? Yes. Indeed <laughs> means yes. I speak. I don't speak fluent Shauna. I am lying. I used to speak very good Shauna, which is the native language of Zimbabwe, when I lived there. But when you don't practice a language for fourteen years, it slips very it quickly. Yeah. 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 I'm so, bad at um, Latin these days too. 
Yeah. So I do speak a little bit of Shauna still, uh, enough to get by, I found out when I was last there. Uh, but boy, I, I walked into a room and just started, thought I was going to just start conversing and was like, shit. Like, I, I totally <laughs> didn't know. I was just like, oops, I you don't remember You can understand all the words. it, right? Like, you can understand it, Mostly. but you can't speak it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Mostly. happens. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. And, Indeed. um, Indeed. you know, we, we, in Zimbabwe, there's, uh, kind of like what Creole is, you know, the language Creole where it's like messed up English basically. And like a bunch of sounds From that sound off English. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, Creole's, I think it's a, considered a proper language, but it's, it's like messed up English, spice. right? Yeah. yeah. It is. It's well, called in Zimbabwe, we have Chalapalapa, which is like a mess of Shauna and English and a few other native languages. And, and I no say, shit. I went from speaking Shauna to speaking Chalapalapa. It's, it's, it's a real, it's a mess now, but at that's least I can fucking get by. crazy. Dude, language is, I'm not, but that language is fucking weird, man. Chalapa. How our brains process it. Yeah. Dude, so there you go. So that's the answer. Here's the thing. This is really important. It's time. Ooh. Bad parts, but Battle Royale. Woo! Woo! <laughs> 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 this last week's podcast. Was that an owl? That was a blue whale, mate. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sure that's exactly what they sound like. Um, that's right. So this was actually a Brosner submission. Okay. You don't have to think too hard. And I think, Ratep, we're going to have our fucking, we're going to have the deck stacked against us here. Okay. Rowan Roberts says, you guys are teamed up. Oh, sorry. You guys are going against one another to complete the 900-mile Iditarod sled race. Oh, okay. Here's the wrinkle. You can't use sled dogs. You have to pick three animals to pull your sled. So you get one of each, one of each to pull your sled 900 miles through very, very cold weather and snow and ice in Alaska. No dogs oh allowed. God. Got it. In fact, it's not no dogs allowed. It's no canids allowed. Guys. Yeah, right. You kind of cop yeah. out and be like, I'm getting wolves. Yeah. yeah. Makes like, sense. Uh, 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 clay wolf, Ratep. That was yeah. what I would say. And you, you, that would have been awful and everyone would have hated Sorry, it. Sorry, I wasn't paying more. attention. What? Sure. No, you're <laughs> too busy stuffing your mouth with chocolate. Um, <laughs> but so you have to pick three animals. You get one of each to pull your sled. We're racing 900 miles through the terrible conditions, the snowy weather ice of Alaska. Mm. It's a snake draft. Retep's up first. Okay. Oof. And Bro and Robert yeah. said that we had to make you first. So don't <sighs> mark. Yeah, mark. this is rough. So you get only the three animals. Yeah. Only the three animals. So they're yeah, pulling me on a sled. Yes. yes. It's you not like weigh... there's not like multiple of each animal. It's just one, two, one three, each. band. You weigh each. by far the most too. So this is important. And it's very cold yeah. up there. And and we're trying, I'm so I'm trying to beat just YouTube in time. Like at time wise, yes, yes, it's yep. not. There's not 17 other people. Pat, can you can you fucking can you relax? I don't know why you get so Sorry. pissed off when I ask questions. Okay, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm just calm down. Pick well, ants. Don't get. God, I mean, they all don't, kind of have to be her. able to go at the same pace because the slowest animal is going to be the slowest uh, of the bunch. All right, so my first pick is going to be uh, a snow leopard, dude. Hmm, it's a fun pick. That's well, a fun pick. It's fucking, it, it can no, manage like the it. cold. By good, the way, good for the cold. I will be calling you out if, if your animal will die in the cold before it gets to the end of the 900 miles. Well, and, and nobody would know better than you. <laughs> Trust me, I will. <laughs> All right, so you've got a snow leopard. Uh, Forrest, how much does a snow leopard weigh, roughly? Like 40, 50 pounds. So it's like going to have a little trouble carrying a 250 pound man. At, at you don't this know my point weight, in time, man. with also, no don't, companions Also, don't, don't to presume help. to tell people my weight on the air. It's 226, <laughs> bitch. I I'm weighed to myself one, today. I'm 190, so I can't, I can't shut oh, up. You're God, 190, you're Patrick? Beast. Holy shit, dude. When yeah. I met you, you were 125 and 4 feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Forrest, uh, Forrest, you go second. All right, I'll go second. Um, Peter's going with the snow leopard. Mm, easy pick straight out of the gate. 
something that's is we're gonna go slow and steady to win this race. We're taking the tortoise approach, not the hare approach. I am gonna go with a polar bear. You son of a bitch. God almost almost spit my wine out when somebody said Forrest about to pick an ant colony and claim it's one animal, like he did on the last podcast. That is Sorry, Pat, you weren't there. It was hilarious yeah. though. I did, I cheated. <laughs> I broke the rules colony. halfway through. Uh why polar bear? What are you thinking there? Well, look, I, I'm I'm looking for something that can go the distance Nate. right now. It's going to go the distance. It's going to stay warm. I've got I've got other picks for sure. I've got one that's very outside of the box, but this is I wanted to take this off the table. It's strong enough. It can pull me all day. It's big. It's heavy. I do have to feed it. That's a problem. We're going to circle back to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it. we're going to start. We're going to start all with right. the polar bear. All right. So I've already won, um, oh. which is tough. I don't love you. Absolutely have this. not. I've already won. Carry this. on. Okay. So <laughs> when I was in Greenland, uh, several different times, when you go to a nice restaurant, you're back from camp, you want to have a nice meal. What do you get? You get a muskox steak, right? I've it's heard that. Made of muskox. Yep. They are perfectly suited to live in the Arctic. So Alaska's no problem. Uh, they run at max speeds of 37 miles an hour, which is much faster than a polar bear, which maxes out at 25. So I'm going to take a big, beefy muskox. I'm it's not worried pick. about it. It's going to eat the grass. It knows how to graze in the cold weather. Secondively, which is a word, I'm going to pick a moose. Hmm. Look, intimidation, right? <laughs> Everyone's scared of moose. Uh, they run at max speeds of 35 miles an hour, still way faster than Forrest's polar bear. True. Uh, they can carry me and my 190 pounds on the sled. So right now I've got a muskox and a moose, and I've won. Forrest, what do you want for your Very second? nice. You, you, you Very could nice. come in second still. You could be Retep. What do you want? Uh, we'll, 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 we'll see about that. Yeah, polar bear's not. Um, polar bear's a good pick. I'm sticking with that. You've got an ox and a moose. Good picks. Retep's got a snow leopard. Not great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's piss poor. I, well, your polar bear is going to fucking eat you and the sled. So You know what? It's not going to eat me. It's not going to eat me, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm going to pick an animal that is notorious for having phenomenal endurance. And I know what Retep's going to say, and then I'm going to explain myself. So I'm not even going to say the next thing. No, nope, won't I'm survive pick, the winter. Won't survive the cold. I haven't said it yet. I'm going to pick an ostrich. Super Dude. fast, sustained speeds of like 30, 40 miles an hour. I'm not positive off the top of my head. They can run for days. And mm -hmm. by the way, what by the gonna... way, right. hey, yep. hey, what? hey, what? hey, In for short periods of time, they can sustain very cold temperatures. The coldest I've ever been in my life was camping in the Namibian this desert. Is, and there this were is ostrich worse everywhere. than ants, ants to prevent you know scurvy why? on the ship. Okay. Wait, why? Why? Why can an ostrich sustain the cold? I, I, well, I don't know about Arctic cold, to be quite honest, because that doesn't sound right. They're from Southern Africa. Everybody but, in the chat has is, is said that you've lost. Amelia, I'm not Amelia. done explaining myself. Where are you going to strap it up? What are you going to strap it to done. its weak neck? I'm not done explaining myself because... The ostrich is going to take off 30 miles an hour. It's going to run itself into the ground, lead of the pack, die, totally fine. It's basically a giant chicken, and the polar bear is going to eat it to continue gotta, on. It's That's a 900-mile right. race. Whatever. Whatever. This is nonsense. Mm. That's, it pick. might be worse than your ants to prevent scurvy nope, from last week. it's a good pick. Um, the brochures are changing their minds as we speak, I think. I'm <laughs> no, not looking. It, it, <laughs> they're not. Nobody is. My second All pick. Right. My second pick is going to clearly make me the winner of this. And not only because it is the best pick out of all picks, but it involves the holidays. A reindeer or a caribou. Uh, they weigh 300 Good. plus Good. pounds. They already Good. carry Santa's sleigh in the air through the night. They fly. Christmas yeah. sky. They fly. And, uh, you know, the snow leopard will run alongside to give the auxiliary support for this giant 350 pound caribou dragging my ass. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, it's, it's a solid pick in my, in my, now, opinion. unfortunately you now have another pick. So what's your next bet? <laughs> no, I know. Why is that unfortunate, mate? Because me... the first one was so terrible. It's not terrible. It's auxiliary support. Just, Fifty just pounds on my three hundred and fifty so, pound so how reindeer. How are your snow leopard? How are your snow leopard and reindeer getting along? What are you talking about? I mean, they're going to be frantically running away from the sled and me as I whip their yeah. booties. 
Okay. All right. Animal you're, abuse. You are, sir, you're out of line. Continue. <laughs> Go ahead and pick I've herpes. I've never been and then an we'll idea, Rod. I just assume that's what happens. <laughs> a fucking ostrich? Thing. Are you kidding me? A good pick. It's a, it's a pick. <laughs> he was in Namibia. He saw a cold ostrich, and it was running really fast. That's right, and that made me pick it. End of, end right. of my my last. So, so pick herpes. The reindeer and the fucking snow leopard will get along just fine, by the way. But what okay. they might not get along with, but he'll have a lead that's very far to the side. A lead that for you American guys, that's uh, a a leash to the left. He'll be far away from both the caribou and the snow leopard. Good God. A grizzly it's bear. It's so long. What was it? A grizzly bear. Okay. So he's going to take an Alaskan brown bear. It can survive up there in the cold. True. I'll give you that. That's not a bad What do you mean you'll give me that? I already gave it to myself. Fuck off. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm not up next. Learn how a snake draft works. Forrest, I will fist you like fight add, you. What would you like to add to your ostrich and I don't even know what your first... Uh, what was your a first polar bear. Pick? The polar bear. Polar bear and now here's, here's where the real genius comes in, gentlemen. Here's where I win the race. You got you okay. dum dums are going 900 miles over flat ground with your with your brazen animals. I shall not do that. I'm going to I'm going to pull a little. What was his name? Like uh, remember the Saturday morning cartoons where they did the races? The the dastardly dog with the mustache guy, the cheaters. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Dastardly dog. I'm going to pull a little dastardly dog because my third and final pick is the doll sheep, an Arctic sheep that can take my sled and make me cheat and take shortcuts and go right up and over the mountains. So while you dum-dums are going down the long, flat flat areas of the Iditarod, we're going to be taking shortcuts over the hills. But what's the doll. polar bear going to do? Is, what is this doll sheep? Tell me about this. Uh, it's in just a, a high-altitude Arctic sheep, you know, like a big... Think, think bighorn sheep of the Arctic. Uh, okay. Very nimble, very agile, can climb up and down things. Honestly, probably not the best creature to pull a sled, but you know, I'm yeah, I'm envisioning ostrich, the polar bears. An ostrich, listen, a listen, sheep, listen, and a fucking listen, polar bear. Listen, Great picks. listen, guy. And here here's I what's going to happen. Skewered. We're going to hit start. Right, the ostrich is going to go. We're going to burn out. Thirty miles an hour, sustained, way faster than you guys. It'll be demoralizing for us to see you it get will. off to such a quick lead. Yeah, it will. And then he's yeah. just going to roll over dead. That's it. Ostrich, ostrich ends. Polar bear I'm eats like, it. I'm like, oh shit! But the polar bear then comes along eats it. We continue a nice, slow and steady race. I see you guys starting to bring up the rear. Polar bear jumps in the sled with me. Doll sheep just decides to take a little shortcut right up over the hill and hopefully we get to the finish line before you guys. Edwin makes a great point. Are are they not the ones that can climb vertically? They can't climb vertically down a cliff, correct? No, they they are known for climbing up and down cliffs. Down too? What do you mean? Yeah, I yeah, mean, fuck so off. You picked an down. ostrich, a polar bear, and a sheep, okay, to win the Iditarod. I'm it's thinking horrible. the outside the box, so look, all right? Look, it's the, the guys, 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 guys. I've already won. I don't need it's to draft. It's not true. Several <laughs> brosters have already claimed I've won. I pinned one comment. Oh, well, one this one. you know how to use YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> I've got a muskox and a moose. I've already won. They run faster than your animals. They're more equipped for the Arctic. This is ridiculous. So what I'm going to do now is sabotage your teams. Okay. Okay. That's I'm going to take a single pregnant mange mite. <laughs> okay. Mange mite. Uh, so it's still, a, it's still hung a, up on the mange thing. Yeah. Yep. So okay. this is a tiny mite, yep. but it's pregnant but, and it's a female it. and it is going to jump when I sort of toss it out of its Petri dish. Mm-hmm. To, onto your animals, uh, your mammals, and create mange in your animals, similar to the wolf, the druid wolf pack in Yellowstone. They will start losing their fur. They will get very itchy. They'll be distracted. They're not going to want to run. They're not going to want to run. It's true. They're going to scratch off their fur. They won't be able to sleep. They're going to be sleep deprived on a nine hundred mile trip. You are fucked. I've already won. Send me the autographed book. I win. Yeah. And your two animals work well together. My, my, mine's a smorgasbord. I'm getting lit up on the... Uh, on the <laughs> yeah, on the, I mean, it's, it's awful. I, I'll I mean, you know, like, look, I, I, 
I try to play with my heart. I try to play outside of the box, and I just get chewed up by the Brosners and spat out the other. You're end. not an outside look, of the box guy, dude. You're very, very dude, square in the first, box. That's me. You, you've won most of these, but look, I've got Bro and Roberts. I've no, got Legendary hasn't. Hamster. I've got Adam Bell, Adam Galloway, Dominic Alianelli. I've got them all on my side. Yeah, I won I this one. I never win. Just give me one. Give you, me. You I'll got give it. it look you. at the Brosners comments, dude. You got it. There's no question. Ritep. You're a solid non-compete. I don't think your name's yeah, come you up fucked. once. I definitely, and just it's pinned to the me, top, so. first of all. Second, I mean, I definitely beat you, and that's all I really give a shit about tonight. So fuck off. That's fair. Also, uh, uh, yeah. What? Valero also, said, let me say this. picked the frozen chicken, and he's right. The ostrich <laughs> might not have been my best pick. I literally, I, I froze, and I was like, I remember ostriches when I was really cold. Ostrich, good pick. And yeah. You know, I'll just say this by, real quick. By. The the only reason Pat won is because he once again stole my strategy, like he stole my top knot. Thinking outside tiny. of the box, his yeah. pick tonight is akin to me picking herpes, or Every, one other time I picked a bacteria. Yeah. He's a thief right. and a weasel, and everybody needs to understand <laughs> that. Even though it appears he won tonight, fuck you. Pat. Hey, Ritep, I don't know why you're it. First of all, why are you broadcasting live from a children's classroom? Yeah. I don't know what I that made that painting. painting. He, he painted that. He I painted that. He on air. He told me, he told me, <laughs> I wasn't going to, I was, I, <laughs> what is that? A broccoli sock? He wants to no, sell it's, it's it on, tree, the, on air. He said, he, he, before you signed on tonight, Patrick, he's like, do you see this thing? I put it up on the wall because I painted it. I'm going to try and sell it on air. I, That's a tree? I, what kind of tree is that? I that, wasn't going to sell it. Tree. I mean, I, I just thought it was, I thought it was a good background. I couldn't be in the office. That so. looks like my Aunt Hortense's hair. That is not a tree, <laughs> sir. Mate, me and you painted wine glasses together one time, and I have two of them I still in use my them. house. I still use them all the time. It was a good I fun. use them as fun. well, but I have one of yours, and it looks like somebody shit a glass out of their ass. Hey, so fuck you. Again. People, people are offering you up to 10 American dollars for that painting, so I think you should. You should well, plus hey, by the, hey, hey, by the way, how about this? We're not going to sell it. We're going to give it away on the next live and I can't so. do it. So the girl from the mad. I, listen, I was I was a Look joke a about me selling it. I just thought it was a nice background. Twelve you know, fifty. We've got a bid off here, guys. We have a bid off. Let's people go. were complaining what about my background in the dailies last week. All right, guys. Week. Here's what I think we should do. Ritep will send his painting. I, I will yeah. not be sending it. You will. You, I'll no. go get it. I will go get it. <laughs> if you come and get it and physically pry it from my cold dead hands, you can no fucking problem. ship it out. No problem. <laughs> Comment in the on the YouTube feed if oh, you want it. Oh, we're at twenty five bucks. Holy we're shit! Negative twenty five. Negative twenty five. Oh shit! We're fifteen fifty. Twenty two fifty five. Thirty. P preschool it's says not thirty. Being sold. It's Some not being Jameson's sold. up to thirty. Uh, Lina says she wants to be paid fifty. Yeah, uh, that's fair. One I can't. I can't do dong. this. Forty it's bucks. Very, it has a lot of sentimental bucks. value to me. Dude, no, forty Ritep, bucks. That's nothing. Be, Ritep, have some dedication to this. This is podcast. worth a million to me. <laughs> dedication to the podcast, motherfucker. Who, where were you last week? I'll kill you. Oh, this is hilarious. Oh, this has been fun. 125 bucks, dude. Dean Hall no, has offered no. you 125 bucks. A million. Bucks. I, won't do it for, I won't do it for less than five. For dude, Markle says 100 British pounds. You're full of shit, dude. If, no, if I swear you're to God, me, I won't. If, if I offered you 150 bucks right now, you wouldn't take that for dude, that for that broccoli. No. I, what am I gonna do? I don't need 150. But what is yellow? That yellow was oh, here is up to 300. Are you? I'm Candelaria, saying 365, bucks, 465. Nice anybody, 465. This has Hilarious. sentimental value. I fucking slaved and painted this. It came out of my <laughs> own brain. It's one of my first paintings. All right, Braden Witcher right. says 900. I don't know if I believe that. That's look. This is going to be given away. I will go get it. It's not. Don't I'll kill worry. you. We're giving this away on the next pod. I will. We go. are not. I'll have it. I will hold it in front of the camera on the next podcast. That's a fact. Boom. Well, you'll you'll have to rep. It'll be it'll be a replication. It won't be the original. People, trust me. He's a That'll weasel. Be. Also. <laughs> Go to, go, if you are listening on the audio, go to the YouTube, thewildtimespodcast.com forward slash YouTube. Also, the daily videos will be back this week. We, Pat fucked up last week. He fucked us all up. He, he had to go on some excursion uh, bullshit. We don't know. Happened. Forrest picked ants for his battle royale pick. That it was crazy. I don't know what happened. But we'll be slump. back. Oh, and and also, Peter, 
Peter, people are saying the Discord is, there's a problem with the Discord. We'll get that fixed by tonight. Yeah? It, there's, yeah, there's no problem. I tried it and posted okay. the new link. Copy that. Go to the Discord, though. That is HTTP colon forward slash slash the wild times, <laughs> the wild times dot club. I'm going to make a um, pinata that is shaped like Pat and has Pat's face on it. And we are going to sell that on the podcast. He's the most unappealing, vile fucking animal in the world. It's unfortunate I can't pick him for Battle Royale picks. The ugliest creature in the world. All right, this is brutal. Oh, man. I can't believe you turned down 400 bucks for that crap. Dude, 900. 900. You're an idiot. (laughs) Oh, you're Hashtag dumb. stop or tep abuse. You're ugly, Pat. Wear it. Find a new hat. For Forrest, you're you're pretty fair, good. Fair. My painting's amazing. It's not broccoli. Eat it a dick, Pat. Good Bye. night, everybody. Love you guys. This was fun. <laughs> this Cheers. Was fun. It's yeah. good to be back. Yeah, stay there. It's gonna take a while to be ended. I'll let you know.